So um, I want to kick off by um, reflecting on the London Mayor Sadiq Khan, his historic third term as mayor. But the line I want to take is this. Is, is, that, is that win a victory for clean air campaigners? Because ULEZ has been such a, a, a sort of controversial part uh, of, his, uh, of his leadership thus far. And if it is, if it is a referendum, if we like, on, on clean air, is it time for the anti-ULEZ lot to button it? Because, you know, we've had a vote. That's what the Brexiteers used to say, you know, in the early days. And, and you lost. Tough. Get over it. That's politics. It's time to shut up with all your Remainer nonsense. You lost. And I think broadly, there's a, there's a, there's a, a truth to that. The Mail on Sunday, they greeted the news of, of the Labour candidate's victory in the uh, hotly contested London mayor elections with the headline, Carnage. The editorial team apparently dumbfounded that so many people could vote for the man responsible for the hated, that's their word, the hated ULEZ extension. Yesterday morning, a number of Tory supporting commentators noted a, a larger than expected turnout in outer London and took this as a show of support for uh, the Tory candidate Susan Hall, who continually railed against ULEZ during her campaign. Turns out that they were completely wrong. Uh, in fact, the very opposite appeared to have happened. Uh, Khan might have beaten Hall by a substantial 11 points across London as a whole. But this is I think, fascinating. In Greenwich and Lewisham, which is one of the areas where ULES was extended last year, to the fury, apparently, of Greenwich, and Greenwich Air Council, he absolutely trounced Hall. I mean, he, he won with more than double her share of the vote. He got 83,790-odd. She got 36,000. It was a similar victory, if not quite so huge, in Merton and Wandsworth, another area that's come late to the ULES party. Unless we forget the row over the expansion of the £12.50 a day ULES charge was previously credited with helping the Tories cling on in the Uxbridge by-election. That was last summer, a few weeks before ULES was expanded. So, so why does this matter to me? Those of you outside of London may be asking. Well, plenty of cities are either operating or considering operating some sort of clean air scheme themselves. We get most of our information about political matters from the media. The mainstream media hasn't exactly been enamoured with the idea of slapping penalties on polluting vehicles. I've given, I would suggest, a larger, warmer platform to those who slate such schemes. But what I think the London mayoral result shows is that when it comes to pollution... The mainstream media is absolutely out of touch with what voters actually want, voters in London anyway, and that is cleaner air. And it's not just the press that got it wrong, I suggest. I mean, the Labour Party flip-flopped on its uh, £28 billion green plan. Khan stood firm with you, Les. Indeed, it's worth remembering that the Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, refused to endorse his mayor on you, Les, last year. The papers reporting that Starmer had told a Labour meeting the party was doing something very wrong, his words, with the you, Les, expansion in West London. Maybe, as some of you said before on this show, Starmer had fell into that trap that awaits every Labour leader and was too busy trying to please the, the right-wing press. Uh, then again, we shouldn't get too carried away, should we, Matthew? These aren't general election results. The turnout at 40-odd percent in London is much lower than you'd expect from a, a general election. Voters do behave differently, depending on the nature of the election. But, you know, seeing as Brexiteers won a, a mandate with a majority of less than 2%, and in some cases did tell Remainers that that was plenty big enough and that we should all shut up, then... Quid pro quo, is it time for the anti-ULES lot to do the same, to shut up, especially when the margins we see in the London mayoral elections are so huge? 0345 6060 973 is the number. Love to hear from those of you who, um, who object to ULES, who hate ULES. Do you feel that you've, you've lost your campaign? Does that what the mayoral re vote reflects? Now, I did mention uh, in my introduction that yesterday morning, some hours before the, the mayoral result came through, we were being told here in the media that the result was neck and neck, with Susan Hall possibly, possibly coming out as a winner. Well, LBC's reporter Fraser Knight joins me to discuss. Good morning to you, Fraser. It was an extraordinary day of sort of managing expectations, I think is what was happening. It really was. And do you know what? There were some jitters really among the, the Labour Party before that count got underway, thinking that actually Susan Hall, the Conservative candidate, may have done better than they expected her to. But as the votes started to come in, as those counts started to be, uh, you know, declared, it, it was clear that actually the opposite had happened. The support for Sadiq Khan had uh, increased. And look, this has been a, a long campaign. It's been a highly divisive one uh, as well, particularly between <coughs> Sadiq Khan and Susan Hall. The Tory candidate is the most dangerous candidate I fought against. Well, I, I think I, that's an outrageous comment. It would be a global embarrassment for Britain if Susan Hall was elected. It would empower and embolden the anti-net zero flat earth brigade. And I hope that he stops patronising people like me who care. This isn't an episode of The Wire. 
This is real life. Just some of the highlights from the campaign yes. trail there. <laughs> uh, you know, but yesterday when Sadiq Khan w- was declared the mayor for a historic third term, it, it sort of spilled over as well. There were some of the boos and the crowd that came from, from Britain first. Uh, there was a moment when Susan Hall went to shake his hand and he seemed to, to not see it. When he was giving his speech, Susan Hall appearing to, to be rolling her eyes and muttering under her breath. Uh, and Sadiq Khan spoke about the toll that some of that divisiveness had has had uh, on his family particularly, a bit of a different side to him, I think, that we saw in that speech. And speaking to LBC first, after that declaration was made, he re-pledged uh, to be a mayor for, for everyone. I recognise the challenges Londoners have, whether it's cost of living, whether it's uh, homelessness, whether it's affordable housing, whether it's uh, crime. My promise is to redouble my efforts uh, and hopefully very soon we won't be swimming against the tide of a Tory government, but sailing with the winds of a Labour government at our backs. Now, you're talking about you, Les, here. Right at the start of the campaign, the Conservatives had been very hopeful that the anti you Les vote would help them here, would yeah. bring out some of those voters, particularly in the outer London boroughs. But it seems it wasn't quite uh, the topic that was on everyone's mind when it came to voting. Instead, there was a lot of focus on housing, on costs, and particularly uh, on crime as well. Susan Hall, in her speech yesterday, uh, urged Sadiq Khan to, to do better on those issues. The thing that matters to the most, and to me, is reforming the Met and making London safe again. I hope Sadiq makes this his top priority. He owes it to the families of those thousand people who have lost lives to knife crime under his mayoralty. I love London, and I urge Sadiq to try harder to make it better. But look, make no mistake, there are some in Conservative circles who do think Susan Hall could have won this. There was an opportunity there and ULES could have been one of the issues that that helped her. But now there are questions around whether she was the right candidate for the party. And no doubt, uh, you know, some form of investigation, I can imagine, will happen within the Conservatives to see if she was the right person to put forward. I would imagine that the the Tory party had taken the view on on ULES quite early on. As I said in my introduction, Keir Starmer didn't back. Uh, Sadiq Khan last summer o- over you, Liz. So whether it was Susan Hall or another Tory candidate, I suspect another Tory candidate would have also fought on an anti ulez ticket. And I, I find it fascinating, Fraser. I, I never imagined that the boroughs that have got the ULEZ expansion would be so fervently pro-Khan. I'm, I'm really surprised, I have to say, because maybe I fell in, believed everything I was reading in the papers. Fraser Knight, thank you. Well, listening to, to all of that uh, is Kingsley Hamilton, organiser of Action Against Unfair Eulers, uh, the, the campaign, and I'm delighted to say he joins me now this morning. Good day to you, Kingsley. Um, Good morning. Do you see, do you see the, the, the huge vote for, for Khan? I think it's another 4, 4% swing after and his third term. Do you see that as, as a sort of mandate for the ULES expansion? In some ways, yes. Um, obviously, I, I, I don't Fair like play, it. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't like it. I mean, we do, obviously, we do a lot of protests. So I, I want to say I'm not the only uh, sort of organiser. There's a few other organisers within the uh, anti-ULES movement, but we protest the ULES because we didn't like it, but I think we can't protest democracy we can't protest the result of the vote because the way to protest a vote is to vote it's as simple as that and quite frankly we lost um which obviously i don't like that but that is the way it is um so yes in that sense zili khan does have a mandate democratically but i think what we have to do now is say to zili khan look the reasons we were against you les are as follows and go through them try and ask him to talk to us um, and perhaps get some sort of concessions. Because let's face it, he's been elected. He's the, he's the mayor of London now, so ULES is going to be around for another four years, whether we like it or not. But there are things that are wrong with ULES. And Sadiq Khan did mention originally, um, you know, he's happy to, uh, you know, he understands that there are genuine concerns with ULES. Well, of course, that's why we were opposed in the first place. So we're hoping that he'll listen to us and take on board the various concerns and what's wrong with ULES and perhaps iron some of those out so we can at least get you know some sort of concessions for example blue badge holders a blue badge holder needs their car they might not be able to afford to upgrade their car they might have a customized car that suits them or it might uh, it might be they just just cannot deal with for mental health reasons or other reasons changing their car but their car might not be compliant but the trouble is blue badge holders aren't automatically exempt it's only higher rate disability 
um, are only high rate disability uh, claimants that can get an exemption from ULES. And what we're saying is, can we just al allow all blue badge holders to nominate one vehicle if they need to, one non-compliant vehicle that, you know, I don't think that's unreasonable, no. you know. Um, then there's motorcycles. Every other clean air zone in the country, motorcycles are compliant, except London. Pre-2008 motorcy pre motorcycles are non-compliant in London. Post-2008 uh, motorcycles are compliant. But the reason motorcycles are not compliant pre-2008 is because the data is not on the logbook. Not because they're extra pollutants, because the data is not on the logbook. But the reason the data is not on the logbook is because it was deemed at the time that the uh, the, the emissions data showed that the emissions were so low it wasn't worth recording. I mean, you couldn't make it up. If, you if would it, think, uh, you would if, think that that would that would give you the common sense that actually, well, if the data, if the emissions data is so low, it's not worth recording, then they should automatically be compliant. I'm, I'm, so, a, I'm a motorcyclist in London, so what you're saying is is music to my ears and makes perfect sense, and I know to be true. Yeah, yeah, and absolutely. It, it, and this this is it. All we've asked for. I mean, to be fair, all along I've been saying this for a long time. We just want debate. We don't want to be told you're against clean air. You don't like clean air. You don't like the environment because that's absolutely not true. You know, I mean, I used to run my non-compliant van on vegetable oil, which was uh, carbon neutral. It's better for the environment, it, it, uh, but of course. It's, if it's non-compliant, so we had to stop using it. If I may, first of all, yeah. um, truly, from the most sincere way I, I can possibly express myself, I think your opening statement is reflected the very best of what British democracy is about. Understanding, taking a view, accepting that... Uh, yeah. Accepting the change. I, we full not, respect. We, we full not. respect. Thank you. Can, Thank can, you. Can, I mean, I, I, I also think uh, your... Your view uh, for debate in the future is is excellent, and I and I'm completely supported. I might not agree with you on, on you, Liz, but I, I totally agree with the, the approach you're taking. Well, Where, can I just say, I, sorry, I mean, sorry, sorry, just because time is short. Just interested. Why? Why? I mean, in Greenwich, the the vote for for Khan was more than double. It was nearly three times the vote for for Susan Hall, and that was in a borough that was contesting legally the expansion of you, Liz. Why? Yeah. Why did the public? This is, I find it because the press was all all over the anti ulest thing. It was broadly supported. Why did the public not go with you? I don't know, quite frankly. And to, to, to be honest with you, actually, those concessions that I've just mentioned and a, and a couple of others, such as the electric scooter situation, uh, I'll, I'll go on to that if you, get, if you give me a minute. Um, I did speak to Susan Hall about this. I said, look, perhaps put this in your manifesto, and it will get people to realise that actually, being anti ulest in its current form isn't such a bad thing if you break down the actual flaws of you, Les, and try and say, look, let's get some concessions. Let's, let's, you know, because she was only going to get rid of the expansion, expanded you, Les. Absolutely, absolutely. But Ma there was nothing to say about, about the current you, Les, that would have remained, you know, motorcycles could be the solution to pollution. A motorcycle does a 10 minute journey in 10 minutes. It might, a car might take an hour to do the same journey. You know, so a motorcycle's not going to do the same amount of pollution, even a, even if it's a really old. I mean, this is the nonsense. A C90 was once reported as the most efficient bike yes. in the world. It's yes. non-compliant. Now, not may, 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 I, may I ask, I don't want to really debate you, Liz, per se. You've, you've made some excellent points, excellent points. Do you, you. Do, you, do you worry that um, perhaps your campaigning, and you, you sound very nice, very reasonable, and, and as I said, Thank total you. respect to you. Do you worry that your legitimate campaigning was perhaps undermined by, I mean, the Guardian said that six of the biggest anti-ULES groups uh, had, I mean, some of them were calling for Khan to be killed, uh, various racist and, and sort of toxic stuff. Do you think that that... that that toxicity of debate that we find online damaged your campaign? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. I mean, my particular group, Action Against Unfair ULIS, we we had to approve every post, and it was an absolute nightmare because we had we've got eighty four thousand members now, um, and there were so many admins trying to sift through all these posts. So, luckily, the article that was talking about racist groups didn't mention ours; it mentioned some others. Yes, indeed. Um, so I just want to clarify that. And so our group wasn't one of the ones that was uh, mentioned as being a problem. But it, it, do, it does, unfortunately. But we said, look, you know, we don't tolerate these kind of things. And we deleted various comments and you know, suspended people or kicked people off the group for doing various things. We always said we don't condone criminal activity. Um, you know, we don't want to bring our group into disrepute. Only yesterday we were outside City Hall and I said, um, we weren't protesting as such. I'd like to clarify it because obviously you can't protest a, a vote. You, the way to protest a vote is to vote. Um, we were just making a point that, you know, okay, we've, we've lost, but we're unhappy. 
and that makes sense. But I said to the police officers there, look, you know, we we don't ever cause trouble. We abide by the law. And they, he went through, put my name into the system. He said, oh, yeah, no, we know that you, you're one of the sort of cooperative ones, so to speak. K- Kingsley, um, I'm, I'm, Kingsley, I'm sorry to say, I've, I've got to wrap it up. I've overrun a little as it is. But I'll say again, full respect to you. Uh, I think that you, you represent the very best of British democracy, excepting you, you lost in a magnanimous way with a clear decent democratic vision of how you may further your campaign. Full respect. As I said, don't agree with you, but I respect the right to disagree with you. And you did very well. Kingsley Hamilton there, organiser of action against unfair ULEZ. He sees the vote for Mayor Khan as a vote for the ULEZ expansion. To you, 03456060973 is the number. I'll come to your call shortly.